Hi, Sandra here from Create in Spain, and I'm pleased to announce that Sure Cuts a Lot have brought out a new update. It's version 4.0.17. This is a very important update. It allows people with laser aligned cutters, such as the Silver Bullet, to do scan to cut or photo to cut, image to cut, basically, uh, that doesn't have to be printed and then sent to the cutter. So if you have your own artwork, you've put out uh, a piece of paper with some stamps on it, you've maybe taken a piece of paper out of a magazine with an image that you want to cut, you can now either take a photograph of it or you can scan it and you can put it into the software and you can cut it out. The video today that I'm making is going to show you the basics of how you do that. I have put a full review of the software on my blog. I will link that on the video. I was able to do this because I've beta tested the previous version to this. They've added a couple of refinements to this one. So here we go. If we go to File and scroll down, Place Image, the next one down is called Scan to Cut, and that's the one we want. And I have an image which I have scanned already, and so I'm going to load my image. Here it is, a simple drawing of a rose, and I'm going to open it. Now you'll notice, if you have beady eyes, that there are four dots surrounding my image. I placed those there. There are two methods of doing the scan to cut, or photo to cut, whichever it is that you're doing. And the first one is that you use the page size as your reference points. And you would go to this box here and you would choose your page size. And it involves making this green rectangle the same size as your page. The second option, the one that I prefer to use because I believe it's easier and indeed more accurate, is the one where you place dots in a rectangle or a square around your image. The reason for this is because you have like a double check. If you've purchased a piece of A4 paper, now yes, the chances are it is going to be precisely A4, but maybe it's not. Or maybe you pick up a piece of paper you think it's A4 and it's actually not A4. Maybe you've trimmed a little bit off of it at a previous junction. Whatever. The other reason I prefer to use the dot method is, as you can see on here, or maybe you can't see, it's actually very difficult to discern where the edges of my paper are. And how can I line up the corners of that with the corners of this if I can't see the edges? In order to combat that, if you do want to do it with a page size, I suggest you put a piece of brightly coloured paper underneath, or rather on top of, on the scanner bed, if you see what I mean, to get some contrast around the edges. Okay, so now what do we do? We need to make this rectangle, this green rectangle, go outside of the edges of our dots. Not supremely accurate, just need to put it outside the edges of our dots. Fairly close, but you, know, you don't have to be paranoid about it. And you don't have to be paranoid about it being a regular rectangle here, as long as it's a rectangle when you actually marked it. I have, in fact, also linked on my blog a file that I created which is basically a grid of dots. I cut it out in a thin acetate and I use that to mark my rectangle. I figure if you're accurate to start with you're going to get better results. So then you click next. If you have used your page size for this it will import it directly onto your mat. If you haven't it gives you a secondary lining up opportunity. And this one, to me, is very important. Now, I'm not going to bother to do this as I would do it if I'm cutting it out because it would take longer and I'm trying to get a video done for you. So I'm just going to roughly place them where they're supposed to be. However, this magnification screen allows you to get better accuracy. If you press your Shift key down, you can get smaller movements and get it more accurate. And, of course, if you zoom in, it also makes it far easier to see where you're putting your uh, crosses. Get them as accurate as you can. When you have done that, you need to place the measurement between these dots 
in these boxes. So you need to know the width and the height. So whatever you have marked, measure with a ruler and put those measurements into this box. Again, I'm not going to bother doing that at the moment because I want this to come out bigger so you can see it more clearly on my screen. But you would check the use custom marks, put your measurements in and then you click OK. Mine's going to come out A4 size because I haven't done anything else to it. So you click OK and it's in there. Yes, I know mine hasn't shown up. That's because I have the view on outlines only and I haven't traced it yet. So there we go. Now, we have our image, we need to trace it because there are no cut lines. So into trace we go. If you do that and you haven't got it selected, then it won't actually pick it up. But if you've got this one selected and then you go to trace, then it comes up for you automatically. Okay. Now I've got this one in blackout mode, which basically means all it's going to do is put a line outside the edge for me, which is what I would want. I don't want all these individual pieces cut. This is not a tutorial on tracing, so if you want that, you're going to have to look elsewhere. I haven't done one on tracing yet. I will get around to it, I promise, but I haven't done one yet. So once it is as you wish, click OK, and you will have your... Um, your cut line and indeed your uh, page, your, your drawing there already. Now if you want to get rid of the drawing, I advise that what you do is you switch your layers on and then you click on the one which obviously is the drawing rather than this one which is not. And then you can press delete and you can get rid of it. Now what I'm going to do with this one is I'm actually going to put this into line mode so I can check what I've got. And you can see I've just got the single outline. Now what they have put on that I didn't have on the beta version, they have put, if you go to path, you can offset. So you can choose to have either an outside offset or an inside offset. So if you want a white edge around it, you can put one, and if you don't want it, then you do an interior offset, and that will cut slightly inside according to how much you adjust these measurements, just as it would any other time when you're doing a shadow, for example. So I'm going to cancel that because I literally don't need it, and I'm going to show you what it looks like in preview mode. We have... Um, on here because I have not taken uh, the trouble to actually put my dots where they should have been. I've got the normal registration marks showing up and they don't line up with my dots. But normally these registration marks would line up with the dots that you have made on your picture. And they do, believe me, I've done this plenty of times so I know they do actually do it. I didn't alter my measurements and that's why they're not. But the dots will line up with your registration marks and you use the dots that you put on the page in order to line them up with your laser. They become your registration marks. You don't send anything to the printer. You don't have to put it through the printer again and put registration marks on. These are your registration marks. If you have used the page size, then it's different. It goes by the page size to put the registration marks on. But if you haven't, it uses the dots. And then you send it to print and cut as normal. So you would go to cutter. You go to print and cut. And the main difference is on this is when you go to print and cut, there are four registration marks instead of three. You've got one on this left bottom corner too. So you send it to your print, your not your print it, your cutter as you would normally, and off it goes. If you are doing a very small design and your registration marks are say halfway up the page here, what I suggest you do is when you set your origin to the start at the corner of the page before you do your your cut, I would suggest that you put it near your bottom right registration mark so it's roughly in the vicinity. And then the first thing it will do is it will go to the rough vicinity of your left registration mark at the top. And once you set that one, it will continue and it will continue down to this third one. And then instead of stopping, it will carry on to do the fourth one. And that's it.
That's all you have to do. So it is pretty straightforward. Now I will repeat, I have put instructions with plenty of photographs on my blog to go with this to make it easier for you to get a good result the first time around. I have included a lot of hints and tips as to how to do it best, how to get the best results out of it. So it's worth reading. Okay, thanks very much for watching. I hope this has helped you. And if you've been hesitating about updating to version 4, I think now is definitely the time to do it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.